to Stroudland Christian Mission Church. Here are our COVID-19 protocols. As we do our best to overcome the pandemic situation, we kindly request that you ensure that all requested hygiene protocols are adhered to in the best interest of everyone. Face masks shall be worn throughout the service by all persons present in the church except a person who is officiating, preaching, singing, reading, praying, or playing a wind instrument. A physical distance of one meter shall be maintained between all persons. Only members of the same household may sit together. Your hands shall be sanitized upon entry. Your temperature shall be taken before entering the church. A person who is coughing repeatedly, sneezing, or exhibit any flu-like symptoms, or who have having their temperature taken for a second time still registers a temperature that exceeds 37.5 degrees, shall not be allowed to enter the church. No hymnals or Bibles shall be distributed. Your offerings shall be placed in the baskets on the table at the altar, either before the commencement of the service or should you arrive after the service commences at the indication of the worship leader. Thank you for your cooperation.
A blessed good morning to everyone. We'd like to welcome you to church this. We'd like to welcome you to church this morning. We're so glad to be in the house of the Lord to give him thanks and to give him praise. Amen. We welcome you to our youth Sunday, to those who are worshiping with us online. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us. And for those of you who are in the sanctuary, it is good to see you all here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And this morning, before we begin, we're going to stand and we're actually going to read. Sorry, we're actually going to have our opening prayer, which is going to be done by our sister Wee. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. First, I want to say good morning to everyone, those who are in the sanctuary and those who are online with us this morning. It is indeed a great privilege to be in the house of the Lord. For in the house of the Lord, is, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy, and at the right hand there are peace and pleasures forevermore. We want to thank you, Lord, for bringing us another time into your sanctuary. For this is the day which thou hast made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We want to even thank you, Lord, for shielding and protecting us that we can come again to worship you because you are worthy of our praises this morning. Father, we know you have done so much for us, and we should not come short in praising you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We worship you this morning. And we bring this service before you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bring the worship team before you. We pray for a special anointing upon them, Lord. And the songs that they have chosen, Lord, we know that we will be blessed and encouraged. Remember the musicians. Remember the technical team. Remember your speaker today, Lord. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will have your way in this service, Lord. We pray, God, that even at the end, Lord, we can say that it was good that we were in the house of the Lord. Everything that should be said and done today, we pray that you will get all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to read our scripture verse for today, which is going to be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to read verse, verse 2, verses 57 and 58, and we're going to read it together. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 and 58, and we're going to read it together. It reads, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that first verse says, but thanks be to God, which gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're so thankful this morning for victory. It says, he giveth us the victory, which means it was not just a wanting thing, it's a continuous victory that our Lord has granted us. And even this morning, we're going to rejoice in that victory. Amen. Whatever you may be going through, know that God has given you the victory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we have victory this morning in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior Oh, me and body, let me 
Hallelujah. Amen. And as we continue to bring Jesus to victory, we will sing that song is God is fighting for us. Amen. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome.
We're so thankful that God is fighting for us. Amen. And because of that, we can sing the song, Hallelujah, that Christ has won the victory for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we sing this song, if you have not already, place your offerings at the back. Please feel free to do so at this time. Hallelujah. He has won the victory. By his stripes, the anthem, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. By his stripes, we are
worship him in your homes, wherever you are. Just start to praise and worship the Lord and thank him. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, we're going to have the prayer for the offering, which will be done by our sister Sabrina Warrell. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. You have won the victory. Church, we need to give him that praise and that honor and that glory that he deserves. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. You have won it all for us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, I bring this offering before you, Father God. Father God, may you bless it. Bless it to the honor and the glory. Father God, bless the ones who had to give the ones who have not to give, Father God, may they find means, Father God, and ways, Father God, that they can continue to give unto you, Father God. Bless the spending of your money, Father God, in this sanctuary, Father God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And just continue to give God praise and to give him thanks. That song says, he has won it all for us. It means there's nothing you have to do but accept the victory and praise him for the victory that he has already given to you. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have our announcements. You may take your seat for those in the sanctuary. And our announcements will be done by our assistant pastor, Sister Mary Farley. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Great, great things he has done. This morning we are happy, we are thankful that another time we can be found together worshiping our living Savior. To those who are online, we are saying a special welcome to you and to every one of us worshiping here in the sanctuary. Let us begin with our Christian Mission Headquarters announcements for week commencing Sunday, October the 24th, 2021. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27, verse 1. Reverend Lennox Wiggins and his son Christian have arrived safely in the USA, and they are presently fellowshipping with the members of our Emmanuel Christian Mission Church. Superintendent Reverend William Aswood and the saints there send greetings and the assurance of their fervent prayers. Today, 18 of our churches have received confirmation from the Ministry of Health as to the number of persons allowed for worship under the current COVID-19 restrictions. Pastors and assistant pastors are asked to forward their confirmation email to larrybraff at gmail.com and lenoxwiggins at yahoo.com. The $131 seed offerings per person in honor of our 131st anniversary should be forwarded to headquarters by Sunday, November the 28th, 2021. Eliana continues to progress and heal well. Her current doctor's visit has revealed that her heart is functioning normally. What a mighty God we serve. <laughs> Amen. Please be extremely vigilant in your observation of the government's COVID-19 protocols. Services, 90 minutes. Read protocols at the commencement of services. Wear masks, sanitize hands, social distance, and keep all registers up to date. The Christian Mission of Panama has invited us to participate in their third global prayer summit on Saturday, October the 30th at 10 a.m. Please be guided by the attachment. Our Hillaby Christian Mission Building Project is coming to a completion. 
the trioplastic application on the external walls commenced last week. Continue to pray for divine covering for our workers. Amen. Let us continue fervent in prayer for God's divine intervention in this prevailing COVID-19 environment. Psalm 27 verse 14 states, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Reverend Joel D. Hope, General Superintendent. Praise the Lord. And now to our local announcements. This morning we extend a special welcome to everyone who is worshiping, worshiping with us today, face to face or online. Thanks to the youth ministry for conducting the service today. May God continue to bless their ministry. Sister Dolores sends greetings. She arrived safely. To God be the glory. Thanks to the mentorship team led by Brother Larry for an informative discussion on Zoom on Wednesday night. May God continue to bless their ministry. Continue to pray for our Sunday school students, the youth ladies, sign language, mentorship, and dance ministries, the senior members, and those who are ill. This morning, we send out birthday greetings to Jacoby. He will celebrate his birthday on the 28th, and we wish him a happy birthday and God's continual blessings. The worship team will sing the happy birthday song for Jacoby. Praise the name of the Lord. A pleasant good morning to everyone, those who are here in the sanctuary and those who are worshiping online. Indeed, we are always glad and thankful when you take the time out to be part of our service. This morning, we are thankful for our youth department who are conducting the service and I don't know about you, but already my heart is richly blessed and encouraged from those wonderful songs that were sung, reminding us that God is fighting for us and reminding us that we have the victory. So whatever you may be encountering, whatever battles you may be fighting, be assured that God is going to give you the victory. So this morning, let me say thanks to Sister Joanne and Moisha, our worship leaders, for a wonderful worship session. Thanks to Brother Archer on the guitar. We are glad this morning to have our Brother Cameron Calendar with us on the keyboard. Please give him a welcome. And our Brother Kishon on the drums. And of course, we are always thankful for our efficient and reliable ushers who always do a very excellent and proficient job. We thank God for you this morning. We thank God for our videographer, Sister Alicia Ennis. We thank God for our technical personnel, Brother Dishon, and of course, our security personnel, none other than the reliable, competent Brother Larry Braffey. So this morning, to God be the glory, great things he has done. You have already heard in the announcement that Sister Delory sent greetings. Also, Reverend Wiggins asked me this morning to convey greetings to the church. They are doing well. 
and looking forward to a fill, per, fill day in the house of the Lord. So as the service continues, let us be giving God thanks and praise. I'm also glad to have our sister Sarah with us this morning. I know that it would have been a struggle for her to be here, but we're glad that you have made it. May God bless you. So it's now my pleasure and my privilege to hand back over to Sister Joyanne and the worship team. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, so much for those greetings this morning. And at this time, we're about to have the word which will be ministered to us by none other than our sister Maria Farley this morning, who is our secretary treasurer of our youth department. And we're so glad this morning that she'll be able to minister to us. So before she comes, we're going to sing this song, Trust in the Lord with All of Your Heart. Trust in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning to the church and good morning to everyone worshiping with us online. I'd like to thank the worship team for so ably leading us in worship this morning. We truly felt God's presence in every song and I'm truly thankful for every song that was chosen, especially the one just now. I feel it leads very, um, it fits, it really suits the sermonette. So I just thank God for the way he has been leading this service this morning. So we'll start first by reading from the word of God. So it should be taken from Psalm 46. Psalm 46, reading. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, 
what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be in your house this morning. I pray that as I give out your word, Lord God, that it will find receptive hearts, Lord. And I pray that it will be something to bless and strengthen all those in the hearing of my voice. And I just pray that your will will be done today and every day in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may take your seats. So, on Youth Sunday in September, Sister Joanne would have spoken to us on the theme, When Anxious Thoughts Come. And she reminded us that in the midst of our present crises, there is hope in God. She cautioned us not to make our fears and our worries bigger than God. In fact, she said that worry and fear only bring torment. Then last Sunday, we had Sister Evelyn, and her theme was faith over fear. And she encouraged us to have an eagle mentality and to let our faith be bigger than our fear. Then on Wednesday night, we had Brother Larry, who encouraged us to share Bible verses that would have helped us to deal with fear during this pandemic. So I believe we all noticed a theme in our recent um, services and what's not. So given that the current climate, there's still a lot of fear around, I believe that I will continue with this trend. So today my topic is the antidote to fear. So I'll give first two definitions. Fear. Fear can be defined as a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, etc. Whether the threat is real or imagined. Three synonyms for fear are anxiety, concern, and worry. But the Bible teaches us that fear is not from God. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, antidote. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines antidote as a remedy to counteract the effects of poison. Now, poison would be any substance that harms the body, and often poison causes death. Fear, anxiety, worry can work like poison to us spiritually. Fear paralyzes us, and it, pre it prevents us from truly living. That is why we know that fear is not from God, because Jesus came to give us abundant life. So if we have something that's prevented us from living, it can't be from God. But instead, the enemy's purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy John 10.10. 10. So that obviously is fear will be coming from the enemy. And it's a tool that he would use to accomplish his purpose. So what is the remedy for this poison? What is the antidote for fear? The first word in Psalm 46 gives us a clue. God. Now this is a very familiar psalm which I believe we often read without really thinking about what we are reading. So I'll read verses 1 to 3 again. God is our refuge and strength, a, present, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. I would like to share part of a Bible commentary on Psalm 46 that I found on enjoyingword.com. So the first part, God is our refuge and strength. Many of the other Psalms begin with a description of the Psalmist crisis. But in Psalm 46, the poet begins with God's provision. He looked to God for help in difficult times and found it. He could say these things by experience, that God himself was a place of refuge, as the cities of refuge protected the fugitive in Israel. 
that God himself was strength for his people, being strong for them and in them, that God alone was his refuge and strength, not God and something or someone else, that God himself was their help, not from a distance, but a very present help. Therefore, we will not fear. The psalmist applied the logic of faith. If God is a real refuge, strength, and help to his people, then there is no logical reason to fear, even in the biggest crises. And he doesn't even stop there. He goes on to describe what is truly the biggest crisis we can face, the earth being removed and carried to the midst of the sea. If that happens, that's the end of life. There is nothing more for us because we need the earth to live. So he is saying, the earth be removed, the mountains carried, the waters roar, the mountains shake. The psalmist considered the most frightening, humbling, natural phenomenon imaginable. He then made the reason estimation that God was greater than them all. And fear before these in some way robbed God of some of his honor. Because we're saying in the face of this trap, even if the earth is removed and carried into the sea, we will have no reason to fear because God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And in the King James Version, the word selah can be found at the end of verse 3. And selah is usually taken to mean pause. What the psalmist has expressed in these three verses is worthy of pause and careful thought. And I would encourage you to do so in your quiet time. So God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we do not have to fear, even the biggest crises. Instead, we can trust God. We just sign trust in the Lord. So we know that we can trust God. But someone may ask, who is God? What is he like? Why should we trust him? And it's very difficult, as you will know, to trust someone you don't know. If a stranger comes to, you, comes to you and say, trust me, especially if something strange is happening, to you, there's danger present, and he says, come, you can trust me, you're going to be like, who are you? So that's the same thing. Some of may ask, who is God? Why should we trust him? And we know that as humans, it is impossible for us to fully understand who God is. However, God possesses attributes that we can know, and he has given us his word as a means for us to understand him. Excuse me a minute. Amen. So I will share eight of these attributes with you to show you why we should trust God. First, God is immutable. He never changes. He said in Malachi 3, 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. And then Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. God does not change. Who he is never changes. His attributes are the same from the beginning of time into eternity. His character never changes. He never gets better or worse. His plans do not change. His promises do not change. So our God is immutable. Secondly, our God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. Um, omnipotent means to have unlimited power. There's no limit to what God can do. God's attribute of omnipotence means that God is able to do all that he desires to do. When he plans something, it will come to be. If he purposes something, it will happen. Nothing can prevent his plan. When his hand is stretched out to do something, no one, and that is no one, can turn it back. Not even you, <laughs> if it's something that he has for you. So scripture is clear that God is strong and mighty. Nothing is too hard for him to accomplish. So our God is omnipotent. Our God is omniscient. 
He is all knowing. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10 in the NIV says, Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. So because God is all-knowing, we can trust that he knows everything we're going through today and everything we will go through tomorrow. And when we meditate on this truth, along with all his other attributes, it makes it easier for us to trust him with all that we have going on in our lives. So our God is omniscient. Number four, our God is omnipresent. He is always everywhere. Psalm 139, 7 tells us that it is, it is impossible for us to flee from God's presence. In Jeremiah 23, 23 to 24, he asks, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth? So God can be everywhere at the same time. And he never sleeps or slumbers. He's aware every moment of every day, exactly what we're up against. He knows our way and is always with us. And there's no place on this earth we can go that he doesn't see and know of. So in the midst of crises, we can take comfort in the fact that the fullness of God's presence is all around us. So our God is omnipresent. Number five, our God is wise. He is full of perfect, unchanging wisdom. God's wisdom far surpasses earthly wisdom. The wisest person on earth will never even come close to being as wise as God. God is infinitely wise, consistently wise, perfectly wise. Romans 11.33 tells us, that because of the death of God's wisdom, it is impossible for us to understand his decisions and his ways. And we might not understand his ways today, but we can trust that because God is in infinitely wise, he is truly working all things out in the best possible way. So our God is wise. And here's my favorite number six. Our God is faithful. He is infinitely unchangingly true. Deuteronomy 7, 9 encourages us, encourages us to know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. God is faithful. He never forgets anything. He never fails to do anything. He never changes his mind or takes back a promise. We can rely upon God. There is no one that can say they trusted in him in vain. Even in difficult times, we can trust God's faithfulness. Because we may not understand it now, but the songwriter says, farther along, we'll know all about it. His faithfulness does not depend on our belief. 2 Timothy 2.13 tells us that even when we are faithless, God is still faithful because he cannot deny himself. God will keep his promises to us even when we get anxious, when we doubt, and when we worry. Our God is still faithful. Number seven, God is good. He is infinitely unchangingly kind and full of good will. In Psalm 34, verse 8, the psalmist is inviting us to not only believe that God is good, but to experience God's goodness. Often it's easier for us to affirm his goodness when things are going well. But in hard times, fear, worry, anxiety creep in, and we may find ourselves doubting God's goodness. But because of God's unchanging nature, we know that God is good all the time. 
even when our circumstances are bad. So our God is good. And finally, number eight, God is loving. God infinitely and changingly loves us. 1 John 4, 8 tells us that God is love. And 1 Corinthians 13 gives us all the characteristics of, of love. Patient, kind, forgiving, etc. We can only begin to comprehend God's love in light of his other attributes. The love of God is eternal, sovereign, unchanging, and infinite. And because he loves us, he invites us to cast all of our cares on him and he means all it doesn't mean that we only take the big cares and we keep the small cares to ourselves there are things that we might think are small are frivolous but he still wants us to cast all of our cares on him so to recap our god is immutable he's omnipotent he's omniscient omnipresent wise faithful good and loving among other things, as our vocabulary is too limited to truly describe who God is. Because he is all these things, we can trust him as our refuge. We can trust him as our strength. We can trust him as our very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Our most common concerns are fear of the unknown and anxiety about the future. Adverse changes in our circumstances often tend to heighten these fears. But I am encouraging you today that instead of being anxious about the future, look back and recall all the times God came through for you in the past. And then open your Bible and look at all the times he came through for others. The God I am encouraging you to trust in today is the true and living God. And it's the same God who parted the Red Sea so the Israelites could cross over on dry land. He is the same God who provided water from a rock and manna for, from heaven to feed the Israelites in the wilderness. He is the same God who defeated an army of 120,000 soldiers with just 300 men. He is the same God who brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego safely out of the fiery furnace. He is the same God who shut the mouth of the lions so that Daniel could, su could survive the lion's den. And he is the same God that fed 5,000 men with, with five loaves and two fish. So we see there is nothing that is too hard for our God. Still, sometimes we doubt that God can really come through for us. Sometimes we believe that the situation we're facing is even too hard for God to fix. And that's because in our minds, we kind of think that God is like us. So we tend to limit him to our ability. And when this happens, we shouldn't beat ourselves up and think that we are not good Christians. Actually, as we read God's word, we will see that we are in good company. Many of the people listed in the Faith Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11 at some point, they doubted God. So I'll give two examples. The first one would be Sarah. In Genesis 18, when the Lord appeared to Abraham and told him that he would have a son by the following year, verse 12 tells us that Sarah laughed within herself. And I believe anybody would. Because a woman at 90 hearing that she's going to bear a son, you'd be like, what are you talking about? And not only that, Abraham was 99 years old. So by human logic, this could not happen. However, the Lord's response in verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? Sarah forgot that God's ability far exceeds human ability. Nothing is impossible for him. Then in Numbers 11, we have Moses. So in Numbers 11, the Israelites were complaining again that they were tired of eating manna and they wanted meat. So God promised to give them so much meat that they would eat for a month until they were sick of it. But in verses 21 to 22, Moses could not fathom how God would be able to provide that much meat for 600,000 men for an entire month in the wilderness. 
So by his human ability, again, he's thinking, well, we're going to have to kill all these flocks and herds and gather all this fish from the sea. But God simply told him in verse 23, is the Lord's hand wax short? Thou shalt see what now, whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Is the Lord's hand wax short? Sure enough, if you read the rest of the story, verses 31 and 32, to 33, God did just what he said he would. He brought all the meat and they ate till they were sick of it, and some of them died. So doubting is human, but we should not entertain doubts for too long. Instead, let us refute every doubt that comes with the questions, is anything too hard for the Lord? Or is the Lord's hand wax short? So while I was preparing for this sermonette, I came across a Bible study that I completed some time back in which the writer encouraged us to walk from, faith, from fear to faith. In the study, the writer listed four truths that we must embrace in order to walk from fear to faith. So I will conclude today with these four truths as they pretty much sum up what I have already said. So truth number one, God loves you. Truth number two, God knows what is going on in your life. Truth number three, God can do something about it. And truth number four, you can trust his goodness in whatever he chooses to do. I'll repeat them. Truth number one, God loves you. Truth number two, God knows what is going on in your life. Truth number three, God can do something about it. And truth number four, you can trust his goodness in whatever he chooses to do. Amen. I will now hand back over to the worship team. Amen. We want to thank Sister Maria for that word this morning. Hallelujah. The antidote to fear. And she went through talking about, you know, knowing who God is and all these attributes of God. But something she said can really, well, many things stuck out to me. But one of the things she said was that God's ability far exceeds our human ability. And that sometimes, as she said, we forget that. And but it's good for us to remember that our God is all-powerful. She gave a full list of who God is, and we can place our hope and our trust in that God because he is true. Amen? So we can stand for those in the sanctuary and those at home. For those of you who would have sat, you would have listened, and something about the word stuck out to you. For those of you who don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we, are, we would like to give you the opportunity to know him this, this afternoon. And we want you to be, we encourage you, you can message us in the chat. We will get back to you with whatever information if you're interested in knowing more about this God that we serve. Also, too, um, for those of you who might be feeling as though you might have forgotten all of those awesome attributes of God, or you might be going through a dry moment, just remember to put your faith and your trust in God this morning. Even as we sing these, this final song, we, you can start to do that prayer, and at the end of it, we'll turn over to our pastor who will give the final, final prayer. Hallelujah.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. What an awesome time we have spent in the presence of the Lord. Truly as we came in this morning and we were able to sing those beautiful songs of the sanctuary, we didn't have to invite our Savior to be here because we felt his presence. And that presence was not only in the worship, but he abided with us. And I want to say thanks, Heavenly Father, for so graciously and so competently and so ably using our young sister Maria Farley to minister a very appropriate and fitting word today. As she would have said in her introduction, for the past month or so, we were discussing or we heard sermonettes and sermons on fear. But we are glad today for the reminder that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a song mind, and above all, God. God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. And after such an efficient, well-presented, well-researched presentation of the word of the Lord today, no doubt we are satisfied that we have the antidote for fear. It's not in ourselves, it's not in our pastors, our ministers, but it's in God. It's in God. It's in God. And we want to thank you, Lord, when we were reminded of the qualities and the characteristics of our God. Our God is immutable. Our God is faithful. Our God is omniscient, omnipresent. And all of those wonderful qualities. Why should we fear today? Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, oh, glory to God. Father, I thank you today for such a word. And I thank you for using our sister Maria. And right now, Lord, she has given out. She would have spent much time preparing, researching, and presenting your word. Father, I ask for your replenishing. Father, I pray that you will give her back good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And I pray, God, that this will not be just another sermonette, but that you will equip her and you will fortify her so that in the future she will also be able to share other sermonettes. Father, today is our youth Sunday, and I take this opportunity, Lord, to present our young people, not only those here in the Strongland Christian Mission Church, not only for those that are on the online broadcast, but all young people that are currently with us. Father, they are the ones that are facing a gloomy future. They are ones that are facing a, a future that seems so unpredictable, but you have assured them today that they have no need to fear. They have no need to worry because God is our refuge and strength, and not a past or future, but a present help in trouble. So, Father, for all young people, I pray for a special blessing upon their lives. And right now, there may be some who may be filled with fear, fear of the unknown, fear of expectation, fear of what they will achieve or if they will achieve, fear of how they will get employment, fear of if they will get a partner in life, fear of if they'll be able to meet their financial commitment in the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you will come through for them another time and you'll remove the doubt and you will remove the unbelief and that you will cover it with faith. Oh, faith this morning. Bless us as we've come to the conclusion of a beautiful morning. And as we journey to our respective homes, we ask that your presence will go with us. And we ask that as we go home, that we will take some time to reflect on what we have heard 
and when we communicate with our loved ones and those who may not have had the privilege of being in the sanctuary or even here in the broadcast that we may be able to share the word of the Lord with them which will encourage them and strengthen them so Lord at this time we say may the grace of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ the love of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen and a pleasant afternoon to everyone and thanks for being with us today god bless you